take us back to the decision then, Bruce, to well, go ahead with this paper. Whose yeah, decision okay, was well, it? We what were, was the thinking behind it? Mm, well, we were producing it. We had produced a number of sort of one-offs and, and uh, um, we were producing a, a uh, little paper, A4 size, called uh, Univoice, which we were photocopying at that time. We ultimately became a department in 1991 and I was the first head and it just seemed to me that you know one of the things that we had to do, we had to achieve, was to produce a newspaper. So we had the little uni voice, and we, we then went from the A4 photocopied version up to tabloid printed. And, um, and then all of a sudden, one day, we just switched from uni voice, which was very university-based, as all our public or most of our publications had been up to that point. We switched to um, a much broader horizon, out beyond the campus. We wanted to, to do journalism that you know, wasn't seen as being focused on the bend in the river in St Lucia. In an institution such as this, all of the, the people who are doing the research work that they do and doing the teaching that they do you know, have one mantra, one motto, and that is the search for truth. Now, if we are in a journalism school, um, I mean, we clearly fall into that mould because any journalist, <laughs> whether you're in an institution or not, you know, has that sort of mantra uh, to guide them. Just mm. moving on then to the uh, student publications that had the word independent yes. in it. Uh, there were three titles. Yes. What, what uh, led to the development of the independence? Well, we just thought it was a, an appropriate name for us. Um, um, it was the kind of journalism that we wanted to do, which was independent. We weren't being uh, uh, driven or um, pushed around by anybody. The university, indeed, didn't tell us what to do, never, ever told us what to do. And I think at times we're probably not necessarily very happy with some of the stuff that we did. But the university was always very good about um, uh, those issues. Um, and, of course, as I've, uh, uh, as I've um, said from time to time in other places, we got... Tremendous pressure um, exerted on some of the students for the stories that they were doing. Yeah, I was just about to ask. Yeah, there were yes, stories we, that you really broke uh, new ground on. Well, what, the, what were the pressures and what were some of those stories? Take us through them. Well, the uh, the first one that we encountered was the first edition of uh, um, the Weekend Independent in May 1992. It was a, it was just a really good story, I thought, because um, I'd gone into a class and I'd said to this group of of postgrads in their first semester, I want you to, you know, as part of your assessment in this semester, I want you to do a whatever happened to story. The example I gave was of Bob um, Campbell and Kingsley Fancourt, the two honest policemen who'd stood up on ABC television in the 80s uh, and said there was a corrupt rat pack at the uh, at the highest echelons of the police force. Later, I mean, later to be vindicated in the Fitzgerald inquiry. Exactly. Um, I mean, but they were driven, out, they left town. Uh, they were pilloried in Parliament and they left town. Now, the Fitzgerald inquiry came along but never called them. Anyway, uh, this one of the students in this group, uh, in a most extraordinary exercise in investigative journalism, it would take uh, several hours to tell you I won't, but he found them both. Um, but what happened then was this, this harassment and intimidation that they had talked about in this story was visited onto the student. And and his family and and so on. The, in what the, way, Bruce? What happened uh, to the student? The, the most extraordinary. Well, you know, uh, phone calls being followed, uh, family uh, being harassed, um, all kinds of weird things that had never happened to him in his life before. And you could you couldn't put uh, you know a face to any of it. But it was uh, it was quite clear uh, that 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 was related to the work that he was doing. The sewers of Brisbane were still running. To pick on a student and give him hell. Well, it wasn't just him. The the, the, the most extraordinary thing that happened after that, because uh, he copped it for about a year, the most extraordinary thing that happened after that was another student turned up with a uh, copy of, do you remember the uh, Harry Gibbs report into the National Hotel Inquiry back in the 70s? So we just you know ran this stuff, as you might. And lo and behold, the same kind of uh, treatment that uh, the that the... The uh, guy who found Campbell and Fancourt had received was was then visited on to uh, this girl, and it only got worse for her when she started to delve into the drugs in jail saga, because that was quite well tow trucks. I mean the the, the tow trucks stories 
that she wrote really uh, annoyed someone because they actually broke into her home uh, two nights in a row uh, to terrify her. She got threats, no doubt, you know, quite blatant threats. I, I, I remember writing uh, little pieces in the paper just to alert the public that, that we were copying this stuff. The kids wouldn't back off. And that was the wonderful bit. They they just made it quite clear that uh, we're not never. They never flinched. They just never flinched. Not one. Not one. And um, um, in the case of the drugs in jail, I mean, you know, it was a straight out. That was a straight out threat to uh, to harm that girl. And Bruce, you're probably best known for your dedication to the story called Shreddergate. <laughs> yes, we a, coined that word. <laughs> is this a, a, a personal? Uh, no, let's it's call not. It obsession. Yeah, no, it's not. An, Bruce it's, Grundy. It's not an obsession at all. It's a story that uh, that that has to be told because uh, what happened, you know, at the outset was a government did something that it should not have done, and no one has ever paid the price for that. And hidden behind all of that, of course, we've discovered since was serious abuse, including sexual abuse, of uh, of kids in the care of the state. And no one's ever paid the price for that either. What happened to the reporters who uh, delved into those stories? Mm, well, I and think it's... also just the general sort of... Uh, yeah. the, those students who were working on the papers, did, did most of them go into journalism or do you think that they had enough at that stage and uh, well, some, some had moved some, away? Some did and some didn't. The one who did the fan court Campbell story didn't go in uh, to journalism, went into the, ac- the academy. Uh, and it's done very well. The girl, um, I think, in those days, uh, I think they hired her outright as not even, not certainly not as a cadet or a minor grade, as a senior graded journalist, <laughs> because I mean she was she was just quite special. Um, but most of the others who wanted to, anyone who's ever wanted to, has, um, has gone into the business. Some of them immediately. Some of them took longer. Looking back. Mm. on all those publications and your role in it, what do you think the students learnt? Well, I think the students learnt um, uh, a, a, a good deal about what uh, the media is for. I think they learnt a good deal about government, that uh, they're putting your, your your faith blindly in governments to do, or in, in fact in, in, in anyone to do the right thing, is not necessarily um, uh, well placed because they all have a capacity to blow up some time, and there's an essential need for someone, i.e. the media, to be out there keeping an eye on things. Now, we don't obviously keep an eye on as many things as probably we should, but there are limited resources. Now, what did so, Bruce Grundy learn? Oh, I learned uh, the amazing uh, ability of young people to do uh, enormous things um, if just given half a chance. And uh, they were, uh, over these years, an absolute delight to work with. They were so committed, uh, they're so talented, they're so bright, they're writing, if it's just an ordinary news story, is spot on. And then when you got to their feature writing, I mean, they're, they're such good writers, you know, scary to have to sit there and mark their stuff and you think, oh boy, if only I could write like this. <laughs> so, so yeah, they taught me uh, an awful lot. But uh, just being part of that operation with them was, was great experience and great fun. 2006, the school celebrating its 85th mm-hmm. anniversary. What does it mean, do you think, to the school, to you? Um, well, um, this is this is, of course, is the first institution in the country to to have a journalism course, uh, and uh, that's uh, a mark in its favour. Uh, took the others a long while to catch up, even though it was 50 years before it changed from a diploma to part of the degree program. Looking forward, what's the future for Bruce uh, Grundy? Are you coming back next year? Um, I've. No, I've Probably not. I think my days, uh, uh, you know, my race is run. I, I've just about finished a book on, it's it's the Grundy book on how to do it. What I'm on about is if you want to get into this business, you are in the business of communicating with people. You want to make that communication work. Now, how do you make it work best? What I've tried to do is to say, here's how to write a story uh, a new story. Here's r- how to write, you know, feature material or whatever. Uh, here's what the law says. Here's you know, all the tips that I know about how to find information and get information. You know, it's a it's a real hands-on book. Now, whether it succeeds or flops, who knows? But uh, when's it being published? Uh, I've got four days to finish it. <laughs> And uh, from then on, I hand it over to Cambridge Uni Press, and uh, 
it'll be in their hands to get it out as quickly as possible. Well, Bruce Grundy, I'm delaying uh, valuable time <laughs> that you should be spending to putting out your book. Thanks for your time. Thank you. It's been a for, pleasure no, to, it's been uh, a, to talk to you and also to work with you. Yeah, great, great pleasure to be uh, interviewed <laughs> instead of on the other side. Yeah.